Hi, hello! Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you are safe and doing well. Welcome back to another J Fashion Mythbusters video where we dive deep into various J Fashion styles with people part of the global J Fashion community. You can check out the rest of the videos that we've done in the playlist, but today's video is going to be all about Visual K! Yay! <laughs> I'm personally very excited for this one because a couple of years back at Onicon, I had the honor of modeling for Sex Pot Revenge, which is a gothic and punk Japanese brand that is popular amongst Visual K fans. So ever since I got to model for the brand, I've always wanted to learn more about this thing, Visual K. So very excited. Also, I remember around 2020, there being some confusion about whether Visual K is a fashion or not. So today, I have two wonderful guests with me who are going to help explain things a little bit better so we can all learn about Visual K together. So we have Stefano, aka Butt Cape, a Texan alternative fashion and food blogger who draws inspiration from Gothic and Lolita fashion, Uji fashion, and Visual K. We've also got Taka, a YouTuber and blogger who makes content all about VK news, events, fashion, translations, and lots more. Also throughout the video, we'll say VK, and VK is sort of just like a shorter way to say Visual K. But all right, let's go ahead and jump into the interview. Hello. Hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, so let's go ahead and get started. If the both of you could give me a quick introduction about yourself, how you found out about J Fashion and your style. So like, you know, when you found out about it, how many years ago and how long you've been wearing it. So, you know, just a little introduction about you and your style. So whoever wants to go first, feel free to go ahead. <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> I, I guess I'll go first. Hi, I'm Stefano, also known as Butt Cape. My Visual K journey started like over 10 years ago when I was in middle or high school. At first, I was like into anime, but as you spend more time online, somehow I got into the VK hole around high school and i distinctly remember my favorite band at the time was versailles and they actually came to dallas texas for akon and i remember being so sad i could not go versailles was the gateway of how i got into j fashion i really liked their collaboration with alice and the pirates and so that's how i got into buying alice and the pirates mm. awesome what about you taka i think i got into the UK at around 2006, if I remember correctly, 2005 or 2006. It all started with a huge Japan boom around that time, and huge UK boom we had in Europe back like then. And I kind of got in during that time with the music first, and I started wearing the style as a brand. So yeah, kind of got through it through Japan meetings and everything. Yeah, that's basically my story. Yeah, I know recently you just came back from Japan, right? Mm. Yeah. How was it? Well, how long were you in Japan for? All this time, only uh, 11 days. Mm. And then you got to check out a bunch of VK bands while you were there? Not just a few money. I kind of got out of it during all the pressing. But yeah, I checked out bands. Also tried to check out stores, but then sadly died out during that time. So. But I'm trying to get back in. Yeah, I forgot what stores it was, but it's really sad, like, kind of what has happened to, like, Harajuku and a lot of the stores over there, they've been closing, though. There have been new ones that have been popping up, which is nice, yeah. but move on to the next question. Very broad question, but what is Visual K? Is it more of a movement, musical genre, fashion, aesthetic, or a broad term that is a mix of many things? Okay, I, I think I'll go first here. Personally, I think VK is... It depends on the person what it is. Actually, it's it's everything you have said just now. It just depends on the person. Like how they view it, I think. Like there are still people out there who kind of like wear it as some sort of we need to protest against society or something. Um, but then you also have the people that mainly focus on the fashion and don't really get into the music, which is rare, but still out there, you know, they make this kind of their main point. But then you also have the people who do not care about the fashion at all, who just see this as some sort of musical movement. And 
don't care about it at all. They just like have it as an extra when they look at the bands or something. But then you also have many fans in Japan who do not really care about it other than like they see it as some sort of idol thing, like the male counterpart to idol culture kind of. This is what many Japanese fans see it these days. So it really just depends on the person that that you're asking, I think. It, it can be everything, in my opinion. I see. If, then what about for you, Taka? How, for you personally, how do you see it? For me personally, definitely the music, but also the fashion is very important to me. It's like a, big, a mix of both for me. I think it comes together as one kind of. You know? mm. What about you, Stefano? Do you feel the same way that it's a mix of both music and fashion? Or do you have a different view about it? So to me, um, I'm taking like Visual K in the broadest sense, in the most traditional definition, that it's a movement in the Japanese music industry that has turned into something lasting still today. And it's the concept that you have a band and they make music, but they also have a, uh, their visual is also as equally as important as the music. Mm. But as Taco was saying, if you ask like maybe people across the globe, it will differ from uh, person to person. I don't know too much about Visual K, but I definitely agree about that, that there is different opinions with different people because around 2020, there was a little bit of a debate on TikTok on whether Visual K is a movement or a fashion or just a music genre. You know, what you're saying about how everybody has different opinions on it, it makes sense why there was an argument. And recently, I was at this anime convention in Vegas and I was talking to a friend about Visual K and, you know, asking, do you think it's a fashion or music genre? And they're like, well, the word visual is literally in it. So that's a big part of it. You know, it's the visuals. <laughs> so fashion is definitely a big part of it. So I can see both sides of the argument. Um, if you want to be like a purist, no, you can't call a outfit VK. Since VK is such an broad encompassment of so many different styles like you have bands that dress up like vampires you have bands that dress up like host club guys you have bands that dress up as clowns like you can't just like define all of that under one umbrella because there's just like so many styles still from a purist perspective you if you want to say that you are wearing vk you can say you're vk inspired but in a modern context, I think it's really fine to label yourself as VK because like when you put a label on something, it makes finding people in the same community a lot easier. But I also think like if you start labeling too much, it becomes a little detrimental. For me personally, since uh, I believe the music is equally as important as the style, I wouldn't call myself VK, but I am vk inspired mm. yeah same kind of like it's also the thing that debate that you've just mentioned it it kind of it has been around since vk came like the the western world kind of drew attention to it this this whole debate has been around since then and there were always people who kind of knew it better than everyone else but at the end <laughs> i think we should just see it as this whole how do you say it the whole the, the big the big word kind of with those things underneath it, if that makes sense. Like a broad yeah. genre. Yeah, broad, maybe. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Let's move on to the history of Visual K and how and when it started. I remember doing some research, something related to like X Japan, I think. Mm -hmm. It, uh, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, whoever wants to kind of elaborate on that. I just know kind of like X was into Western glam rock stuff and then kind of made it their own and then this huge thing got of, out of it. So that's the only thing I know. I never really cared about the background, so I'm probably not the right person to ask about that. So please. I've got a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, BK started to take influence from a lot of Western punk, glam, and hair metal bands from the 70s and 80s. In the early BK days, you can see a lot of influences taken from Kiss, 
Uh, mm-hmm. David Bowie, Motley Crue, bands like that. And not only visually, but they also took a lot of the dramatic rock sound from those bands as well. Early notable VK bands include X Japan, as mentioned earlier, Lunacy, and Clay. And it started mostly as a contrast to pop music rather than a contrast to other rock bands. And then in Japan in the 90s, it did actually become a point of mainstream interest. Leader and guitarist Mana of Modic Smalls slash Malice Miser mm-hmm. used to be on like mainstream variety shows. He came on, didn't say a single thing, and people loved it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of declined uh, to modern day because we don't really see VK on the uh, modern television anymore. Mm. I would say the peak of Visual K was in the 90s and like the 2000s. There's still a scene for it, but it's more niche and uh, not as much as a phenomenon these days. A lot of bands from the golden era actually tried to distance themselves from VK once they got popular such as like Larkin C, Darren Gray, and Miyagi. I guess they thought like, oh, we're too good for VK now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Darren, Gray- <laughs> Darren Gray actually went back to saying they're VK now. Mm. And then in America specifically, Visual K got a huge boom in the thousands through anime cons and Hot Topic. A lot of VK bands used to come to anime cons because they were probably super cheap to book and it was still niche and indie compared to some like big J-pop names who were popular at the time, like Kodakumi or Utari Hikaru. Hot Topic was selling uh, Visual K Cure magazines and CDs. Those were almost on- the only channels where people could get VK stuff. And then I believe YouTube was starting around the same time, and so we were starting to get music videos coming in illegally or legally. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, that's history of VK. Yay. In a nutshell. Taka, is it is that kind of similar in Europe as well? Like, was mm-hmm. it around that time, you know? Um, I know it like is there a hot topic somewhere in Europe? No. Or is that just no. okay, okay. No. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't sure. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know in Europe, but definitely not in Germany. Maybe in England, but I don't think so. No. I'm not sure about that either. But mm. for for y'all in Europe, how would you you know find information about vk and the bands like is it online or through word of mouth yeah mainly online um like i can only speak about germany now but we had a page called animex back then which used to be a anime fan page as the name suggests so we kind of got some infos there we also had a big uh, page called yame back then which focused a lot on this, but also we also had a magazine um, which was called Peach, which also focused a lot on. It was kind of like they tried kind of like to be the German version of Cure, but not really. <laughs> so it was more like a news thing. But yeah, we had something like that as well. Yeah. Mm. Would the both of you say that VK is more popular in Japan or internationally, or is oh, it? Yeah, is it a hard question to answer? Yeah, it's it's generally not very popular, so... Um, hmm. mm, that's a good one. Yeah. So, if you, like, go to Japan and, like, just ask some normie on the street, Hey, do you like VK? They're gonna be like, what the heck is VK? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they probably know about it, but it's kind of like, yeah, ex Japan, okay, and then they do not really care about anything anymore. It's kind of like if you ask someone in America, for example, hey, are you into goth? Then they, they know what it is, but they don't care. I think that's kind of similar. Yeah, I'm like trying to think about it in terms of like, you know, J-pop idols, like AKB48, thinking about how they would promote it more in Japan, but there isn't so much promotion internationally. But yeah, I don't know. That, that just came up to mind. But speaking of music, so how would you differentiate between VK and other dark fashions and music genres like punk, goth, metal, emo, etc.? Like, is there an uh, a very obvious like separation from these things? Or yeah, how do you like differentiate them like in the way of fashion or music either or yeah fashion or music like um yeah both ways both ways that's also a very hard one like 
especially for me um, in terms of describing it in English. Yeah, fashion wise, there's obviously, I think you can see it just I, I can't really describe it but if you like compare a goth pig to a, like a normal metalhead pig and a VK outfit pig you can clearly see the difference I think I just I can't really describe it in English but for music I think it's the same like VK usually follows a certain pattern in order to make it danceable um, at the concerts also kind of hard to describe if you don't know the foodie that come along with it but if you know how to act during certain parts of the music it makes sense and you know kind of know what's coming next so i think this is definitely something that is kind of different from like normal metal or yeah it's, it's just a normal musical genre you know they all follow certain rules at some degree so it's just hard to describe it in english i'm sorry maybe safana has another a better answer so i'm not a music expert Eric, <laughs> but here's what i got Uh, so the number one determining factor to tell if something is VK is if the band calls themselves VK. <laughs> mm. Sometimes there's some bands that get lumped into the scene, but they are like, no, we're, we're not actually VK, y'all. <laughs> don't, don't, don't call us VK. <laughs> That's happened a few times. So music-wise, VK is not a, a musical genre per se since uh like i said earlier it's a mix of a lot of different things many vk bands do play metal they do play rock and emo music these bands also tour with western metal rock and emo bands overseas and since they're touring with these western metal rock and emo bands i would say like there's not that harsh of a distinction between every type of music there's a lot of blending going on Mm. And there's a lot of overlap between the music genres and the fashion as well. Like Japanese metal in general has quite a unique sound. I don't really know how to describe it co or compare it to Western metal, but like it's got this formula to it that's really marketable, I guess. <laughs> that ties into the little bit of the idol culture from uh, talk I mentioned before. And with the fashion, there's a lot of blends of goth emo styles and a lot of punk elements too so taka you were mentioning earlier how there's like a culture and a bit of a like formula with like vk lives and stuff right because i've seen some videos where the youtuber would go to like a vk event and there are certain parts where like people can't record with their phone or they have to like cheer a certain way um, you know, you, so you've been to these events comparing to other, like, let's say, like a Western goth punk band or something. Like, is there an obvious difference at like VK events, like how you should act and um, cheer for the performers? Yeah, it's and it's kind of like a, a completely different world. Like, first of the energy is completely different. They have certain rules depending on the band. For example, in first row you usually always have the same people. It's kind of like their number one fans or something. I would like to say the respect is a bit different like towards each other. It's like not like the typical Western concert. It's just like everyone tries to be in first row at once. Like you wouldn't have that in at the VK concert in Japan unless it's like a super crowded place. But like a super small venue, but the typical one, they kind of, um, you know, have their space so that everyone can kind of put their whole energy into the performance. Like, how do you say it? The the partying down there, the head banging has a structure, the hand movements have a structure, as you've said before. Yeah, it's kind of like some sort of choreography. Is that the right word? There are also some bands which put out videos on YouTube where they kind of do what the fans are supposed to do on the videos to show them how they are supposed to act during the song oh wow it's, it's that's it's, that's it's so interesting cool. like it's very yeah. similar to like idol culture because they will uh, yeah. they'll make videos where they're like okay like you know this is how you chant and this mm. is what you say during the song but let us move on to more so the fashion side of vk so what do you feel like are the key, key but, sorry what do you feel like are the key elements in a vk outfit you know would you say there's a certain way that people do their hair or their makeup or the fashions that they wear on average like how 
would you say or what would you say are the key elements in a VK look? It also depends on like which direction the band is going, you know? You have like those super dark Kote bands, but then you have like the Kida bands, which are the Kida Kida bands, which are kind of like yay. It depends on the direction as well, but the most important thing I'd say is usually the hair. Still kind of anime-like, I don't know how to describe it better. So that is kind of important, I think, and yeah, depending on which direction that is. Like for Kote, you usually have like those big colors, I think. It just depends on the direction. It's, it's kind of hard to pinpoint, but usually, let's just say it looks expensive <laughs> and well put together, usually. So, in my opinion, usually, like when you think of a VK outfit, you're thinking of like 2000s, 2010s bands these days. We're not trying to do 90s with like the giant teased hair <laughs> because like that takes too much hairspray in time. So, um, typical VK outfit usually has big hair, usually teased in some way, bold makeup, very eye heavy, like lots of black around the eye. You have to have like a certain drama and attitude to your outfit. It's kind of similar to Gyaru fashion, where what matters is the overall styling. Mm. The hair and the makeup, it can really like make or break your look. The clothes come kind of come second. You don't necessarily need any like name brands or anything. It's just like the overall vibes. And then there are clothing brands that UK musicians do collaborate and wear and buy from a lot. But that doesn't mean you have to buy those brands uh, to be VK. Mm. I find that's very similar with a lot of J fashion styles. It's a lot of the vibe of it. You know, it's not so much the brand, which I think it's great because then it's uh, a lot more accessible to a lot of people and you can get really creative with it. And Taka, you mentioned how, you know, with the fashion, because there's all sorts of different kinds of brand, uh, bands, sorry. And it's a very broad thing. So in the whole like VK umbrella, so I know of Oshare K is uh, one of the like more colorful sort of like sub genres styles like off the top of your head what are like some other types of sub styles i guess you could say there's definitely a uh, dakota one which i've mentioned before the very dark stuff kind of very goth inspired but you also have something like Angura, like I mentioned Kida Kida, which is kind of like the one that kind of took over Oshare. Recently, Menhera is a thing. I think there are some bands that label them, but I also feel like it's less the aesthetic and more like the way you give yourself, kind of. There's very <laughs> many out there. I think like the most distinct one you had mentioned is like Oshare K, which mm -hmm. is like the bright visuals, more bright music. There are a lot of other subgenres that I personally do not keep up with because an English-speaking conversation, you typically wouldn't dive that deep into it. And it, they're a little hard, sub-styles are a little hard to define as well because like you can group them by what kind of music they play or you can group them by, like how they look or you can group them by both elements. Since there's two factors, a lot of overlap happens within these labels. So I personally don't really keep up with them myself. In Japan, you'll probably find like lists and lists of sub-styles, but uh, globally in English, uh, I don't really think it matters. Yeah, also I would like to add something to Oshare K. For years it has been like kind of a um, mistranslation, misinterpretation um, of the whole style together because as said before, most people when they hear the term Oshare, they kind of think of those colorful bands, but actually Oshare just means kind of like trendy or fashionable. So um, the thing is, usually Oshare K bands used to kind of like take inspiration of what's currently popular among the fans, which is also why like back in the 2060s, uh, 60s, <laughs> the 2006, around that time, they were kind of like so colorful, punky a bit because they drew a lot of um, inspiration from Harajuku at the time. But then it kind of shifted to what was popular in Shibuya and Shinjuku and kind of like that, like they kind of got more hostish, more gyaru-ish, gyaru ish So that's kind of the thing of Oshada, like it's not just that colorful thingy. It was kind of something that was heavily inspired by the fashion magazines that were out there back a few years ago. So I think this is also why Oshada isn't really out there anymore because there's not 
a lot of stuff to get from other than like Jirai or something. I think that's that's a huge thing that always gets kind of misinterpreted. Mm, yeah, misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got like confused too. Oh yeah. yeah, since we're talking about misinterpretations, are there like any other misconceptions or misinformation about VK that you would like to dispel? Like, kind of correct, I guess. There are way too many. I think the the biggest one, which annoys me all the time, I hear it is when someone says you cannot be VK unless you're Japanese or you're Asian looking. That's like the biggest bullshit ever and that kind of like misses the whole point of what VK is or used to be. Like whenever I hear that, all I hear is I have a huge fetish on Asian looking people. Like that's all that's behind it in my opinion. And it's, it's kind of bullshit and that's something that annoys me a lot. Well, yeah, that, especially since there's a, such a huge scene in Europe. Like in America, I think as well. Like it's kind of like a worldwide thing by now. Other than that, like what are some other things that people get wrong, I guess, about VK? They usually translate the K as style, which is not correct. If you look up K in the dictionary, you will find the world system or group or something like that. Like it is not style. Like it's just something that people have mistranslated back in the early 2000s and it kind of lasted since then. Yeah, that's uh, quite similar to, to other like J fashion styles. They think mm -hmm. like fairy K, it's like fairy fashion, but literally the, mm -hmm. the word K is not fashion or style. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't I don't know if genre is the right word or something else, but it's just, it's the thing. Kind of <laughs> I don't really know how to explain else, it, but it's, it's yeah, I, I get yeah, what yeah. you mean, yeah. I think uh, another misconception is when um, we think of VK as a fashion style per se, I think people tend to forget that a lot of these what these bands are wearing are specifically stage costumes, and it's a little difficult to wear that on a day to day basis mm. a lot of bands are wearing things like made of like completely like pvc or leather thing or full face of like white like shiro nuri makeup yeah a lot of these things are stage costumes but there are ways to like adapt it to like an everyday style if you want and then i feel like we focus a lot on what the fans wear but um part of vk it, i believe is also what the bangyo where which is like the people going to concerts mm, i actually i when i was doing my research blah, blah, sorry when i was doing my research i saw that word a lot bangya like what what does that mean exactly so bangya is a combination of two words it's band and gal or gyaru so it's like a fangirl basically who goes to these concerts mm. and so like Sometimes it's news for like the most extreme bands, like people who go to every show, collecting all the goods, buying all the merch. But uh, in general, it's just like someone who likes a band. Bangya wear all sorts of things to concerts, like depending on the band. Like if you're going to a Modic Small concert, the Bangya there tend to wear like Gothic Lolita or specifically Mwama Meme Mote, which is Mana's brand. The concert, some Bangya wear for other bands where it's just like casual stuff casual punk and gothic but also like some of them just also wear like band shirts or they're just normal cute girl clothes yeah most of them probably wear just the normal uh cutie girl clothes or band shirts yeah if somebody wants to try wearing or you know getting into vk and they want to like you know emulate the look how should they start do you have any advice how i did it was Look at your Oshi, your number mm. one band, your number one guy. <laughs> Do you like what they wear? If yes, copy that. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to what others say. It's a lot of copying, even though they're used to be. I don't know if they're still out there, but there used to be many people who were like, oh my god, you're such a copycat. But it really doesn't matter if you if you like if you like it if you think it's cool if you're comfortable with it then just do it. Just copy it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not that serious. Once they start getting into it. Is there, I know you said that it's not as popular as it used to be, but currently are there any communities for people to find others who are into VK or is that more of like a back then thing? I know back in the day when we were like all in the boom, 
like live journal was the place mm -hmm. but obviously um uh, Live journal does not really or merely exist anymore. I know there's a lot of VK fans on Twitter, or they might have like fan specific discords. I know VK TikTok is a thing, but I don't really know anything about that. Mm. <laughs> um, personally, I stick to Gothic Lolita communities because that's what I wear. So there is a little bit overlap between VK and Lolita, but uh, yeah, I don't know where the people are going these days in specific. Do you know Taka? Not really. I haven't been part of a community that much in many years, but I would say it's still possible to find a lot of connections on Instagram. Also, as mentioned, Twitter, but I would be cautious on there because there are either very toxic people or very, how do you say, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of like a place where you can lose your love for the fashion on everything like really fast because there are a lot of toxic people out there so maybe instagram instagram also there is a forum out there i think it's called jrock me but i don't know how far you would be able to make connections there i'd suggest instagram do you the both of you have any like people on instagram that you like to follow that people could check out if not it's all good you can just send me their handle later and then i can put them on the screen <laughs> uh, i tend to just follow the band members myself mm. and then i also follow fake star to see what bk bands are going to play in america yeah fake star oh my gosh yeah i was just with them at sin city because they brought minori to the con it's it's pretty cool how they're bringing all of these japanese bands to all over i think i'm not sure if they do outside of america let's move on to the next question so what are some places and or brands people can find clothing and accessories for vk i know you said you know you don't have to be brand specific it's more so about the vibe but if people you know were like looking up secondhand shops on mercari japan for example or even just like uh western brands do you have any suggestions for where people can find those things i would say definitely sexport revenge as for japanese brands h naoto and if you have a lot of money you can look up silver rice but i wouldn't recommend it it's like very expensive you can still find if you happen to be in japan a lot of stuff in harajuku but you have to be cautious there because i've noticed that many brands kind of sell stuff on aliexpress like for 20 bucks and then resell it for over 100 as for western Friends, I spontaneously could think of Punk Rave oh, and Killstar maybe. But generally you can also look at things like AliExpress. You just have to be kind of cautious because there are some shops out there that just put the label VK or whatever onto everything in order to sell it. So <laughs> it's kind of, uh, you know, but second hand shops. Vinted is a good, good one. So like... Uh I mentioned earlier, the brand's name's not as important. You can find most of your favorite looks at got punk stores in general the most important things hair and makeup but uh some brands that you'll see a lot of people in japan wearing and a lot of bands working with include h nauto alice and the pirates atelier boz dior art civilize sex pot revenge and in some other j fashion brands that don't always collaborate with bands but they do fit like the goth punk aesthetic are like Rowan, Hellcat Punks, Oz On. A lot of VK bandmen like wearing silver jewelry. So for accessories, you could go to Chrome Hearts, Justin Davis, and Artemis Classic. And for shoes, most of the shoes are like from long time goth shoe brands like Demonia or New Rock. And there's also Yosuke USA, which is a Japanese shoe brand, despite the name. Yeah, I don't, wait, why did they, why do they have USA in the name? Like, I, I never understood <laughs> that. I have no idea, you know. <laughs> you can thrift a lot of this stuff too. Like I said, it's like the overall vibe. If you want it to be VK, you could make it VK. Awesome. That was great advice thank you very much let us move on to the last question which is do the both of you have any last words or things that you would like to promote stan material opera uh <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite bit <laughs> personally i do not have anything to promote but i have kind of like an advice 
a pledge. I have noticed that many young VK fans are like very entitled and kind of attack Bandman because what they are doing is not quite fitting their tiny horizon. So I would like to beg you to please stop and <laughs> just, I don't know, kind of calm down. And if you have something that triggers you, then it's your responsibility to fix it and not the world around you, especially not a place like VK, which has like a lot of aesthetic drawn by expressing like trauma and pain and something. So please be a bit nicer out there in general, also amongst fans, towards bandmen, towards everything. Just be a bit nicer, really, please. It's getting a lot and it's not good. It's, no, it's not helping anyone. So that's kind of my last words please. yes be nice and respectful to everyone that is very important your favorite band men are humans too exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly kind of a last note for me i guess i would say that while labels like vk could be helpful in certain conversations you don't need to put yourself in a box that can be easily packaged and consumed. Sometimes labels can help create a community, but sometimes they can just overcomplicate things. So there's really no point of saying like, hey, you're not VK enough, mm -hmm. or like, this is the real VK of doing X. Don't worry about so much about meeting anyone's expectations and just be yourself. That's the real punk way. Yes, <laughs> so true. Yeah, I find that, you know, whenever I do these sorts of videos, like, I'm not so much trying to be like, this is the right way and this is the right way, you know? That's why I like speaking to multiple people about these things because everyone has their own opinions about it and their own way of styling things. So this is more so so that it can introduce these things to new people. Uh, especially there's a lot of young people who are getting into J fashion lately. I see a lot of it on like TikTok, like people making get ready with me visual K outfits. So this is just kind of like a, a, a stepping stone to encourage more people to get into it. But of course, you know, when you get into it, please be kind and respectful to everyone. So yes, but... Thank you both again so much for your time and for your just being very helpful. So I really, really appreciate it a lot. Thank you for having us. Oh, yeah. nice. Thank you. And if you want to see what I'm up to, you can check out my blog, which will be on the screen somewhere, www.stefano.me. I know I said it earlier, but I will publish the Where to Buy VK style clothing from Japanese brand soon mm. and I also share my outfits if you like my style yes if you want you can check out my YouTube or my Instagram yes, but if not that's that fine too <laughs> it's very good you also have a translation blog right yeah but it's it's slow it's very slow <laughs> like I have, I'm trying to translate a few song texts but I don't have much time for it, so I'm... But I recently started a news blog about VK, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. I'm trying to um, make daily updates, so maybe this is something for you. Awesome! Yes, I will link yeah. all of these down in the description, so please check them out and support them, so... Yay! Thank you again to both Stefano and Taka for your time and for your knowledge. You can check them both out down in the description below. I hope this video was helpful to anyone new to VK or just interested in learning more about it. And I'd love to know if you are interested in trying it out too. And if you have any other suggestions for other styles that you would like to cover, or, or for me, yes, me to cover in the future, please let me know down in the comments below. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my lovely patrons. I'll see y'all in the next video, so take care and bye-bye!